Hey guys, I am so excited to be with you guys for the last night of TNT. Just a reminder that afterwards we are doing a senior roast with Conlon and a few others, so please make sure to stick around and join us for that. It's amazing. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about how to live a Christian daily life. So while I was here as a student, I took one lab science class my entire four years, and that was Horticulture 101. And our semester-long project was to keep a plant alive, and I almost failed it. You're probably asking, how do you fail a project that easy? Well, there's four basic things needed for a plant to grow. And what are these things? You guys can just shout them out. Water. Water. Sun. Air. Air. Good job. Dirt. Dirt. Soil. Awesome. But it's not just as simple as giving a plant these four things and then just letting it do its thing, right? Plants are known to be temperamental, as any plant enthusiast will tell you. And my dorm room was not cutting it at all. My plant needed indirect sunlight, but my dorm windows faced east. So every single morning, my plant would be drenched in sunlight. And of course, I was living in the dorms and it was super cold that semester, so I couldn't open my windows and was just giving my plant dorm, stale dorm air. Disgusting. <laughs> I was unable to give my plant the proper amount of sun, soil, water, and air it needed to grow. So by the end of the semester, my plant had grown a little bit, um, but the leaves were very yellow, and my plant was leaning way more than the plant normally should be. Um, but luckily, I was able to pass the class, and I got to take it home. So you're probably wondering, wow, Danielle, we are talking about plants when you're supposed to be talking about living Christian daily life. But just like plants, we as humans need some basic needs, basic things to survive. Food, water, shelter, clothing, oxygen. And just like different types of plants, different people need different amounts of some of these things. For example, some people due to life circumstances, various life circumstances, need more calories per day and more food intake than others do. Do we still all need food to survive? Absolutely we do. But I definitely will not be eating the same dinner as a Purdue linebacker would be. And here in Indiana, it's getting really cold, and so we need thicker, long-sleeved clothing to keep warm. But in Florida, where it's much warmer than it is here, they don't need as much clothing to keep warm. Yes, in our society, it is encouraged to wear clothing. We just fulfill that need in different ways. Then as Christians, there are some things that we need to live out a Christian daily life. And I don't have time to cover every single thing. That'll take way too long. But tonight, I am going to cover two absolute necessities, daily quiet time and prayer. And these are essentials to living a Christian daily life. So to be a Christian is to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And we recognize here that not everybody tonight is a Christian, and we'd love to talk to you about what those next steps are if you have any questions or just need somebody to talk to. I know the staff and the leadership team would love to chat with you. Our desire for you is to know, love, serve, and share Jesus. But for those of us who have a relationship with Jesus, how do we live out that relationship? Think about your relationship with your best friend. Did you guys become best friends instantaneously or overnight? Most of you guys would probably say no. It probably took a few days, months, weeks, years before you finally determined that that person was your best friend. I met my best friend here at launch, and I actually found out recently that she didn't like me very much when she first met me, which was hilarious. <laughs> Most of you guys know my best friend, so that's, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I was very intentional with how I interacted with her. I invited her to church with me and would drive her to church on Sundays, and then we'd get lunch afterwards. Um, I'd drive her to and from launch events when it was raining or snowing and take that time to really have intentional conversations with her. And over time, she began to trust me with things going on in her life, and an authentic relationship developed from that. I love my best friend. She brings me so much joy. We talk every day about literally everything, even though she lives two hours away in Fort Wayne now. That type of relationship, that's the same type of relationship God wants with you, but even deeper than a best friendship. God is not just a genie that you can take out whenever you want him and put him back whenever you don't need him anymore. He wants a genuine, authentic relationship with you. He wants to be the priority of your life. He wants you to share your life, your desires, your hopes, your dreams, your anxieties, and everything else with him. And for you to know his story, his character, and his instruction. And having a dedicated daily quiet time to spend with God helps to do all of these things. So it is essential to read God's word, which is the Bible. 
And if you don't have a Bible or have never read the Bible before, I'd love to talk to you about what that looks like and give you some books to get started with. Um, but reading the Bible should be the main part of your quiet time. But as I said before, just like some essential elements, just like food, a quiet time is going to look a little bit different for everyone. Our timing of our quiet times may differ. For some of us, morning quiet times may be better. It may be, um, you know, we may have a little bit more energy in the morning to get started and start our day out with praying to God. But for those of you who are not morning people, and I 100% respect that, afternoons between classes or work shifts or even evenings may work better for your quiet time. It is just essential to have a quiet time and to make that a priority. And what exactly we do during our quiet times may differ as well. Some people choose to journal what they've been learning in their reading. Some people listen to worship music as a part of their quiet time. Others practice silence and solitude in addition to their Bible reading. And that is just sitting in silence with God and listening for him and just spending time one-on-one -on -one quietly with him. Others simply read and pray over what they've read. And still others do combinations of these things. And I'm sure there's somebody in this building that does something that I have missed. But there is one thing that really matters with quiet time, that you are getting into the word of God in order to understand his story and grow closer to him. So I would like you guys to break up into groups of five-ish people, and we're going to talk about these four discussion questions. So we're going to take five minutes to do that. Um, so before tonight, have you ever heard of a quiet time? And what did you think it was? Um, we, once again, we recognize that not everybody has had a quiet time before, and that is totally fine. I'd like for you guys to be vulnerable with each other and be honest about what is going on and what you think quiet time is. If you do have a quiet time, what does it look like? What, if anything, keeps you from having a dedicated quiet, quiet time? And what, if anything, would you like to add to your quiet time? So take about five minutes to discuss, and then we'll come back together. I understand as a college student, it can seem very difficult to find time to spend with God. Having classes, jobs, homework, family, friends, and other priorities in life can make it seem almost impossible to have a daily quiet time. And I will be honest, I don't know the exact number, but most people did not raise their hand for the daily quiet time. I get it. College is a stressful time. But even Jesus, the Son of God, who was fully God, yet fully human, spent time with his Father, who was God. In Luke 5, 15 through 16, it says, Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So despite the fact that Jesus was already constantly working to share the good news, heal people, and teach his disciples about God, he still found time to spend alone with his Father. And if you profess Jesus as Lord, if Jesus does spend quiet time with his Father, you should be too. We are called to emulate Jesus and all that he does. Now, I will caution you when I say to read the Bible. I definitely do not mean to flip open to a random page of the Bible and blindly point out a verse and read only that verse. I've been there. I've done it. And it has not deepened my relationship with God at all. In fact, I found that when I do that, I tend to point to verses that make no sense out of context, actually goes against what God is saying. And so for me, I like to read at least a chapter every time I have a quiet time to truly understand the context of what I'm reading. Um, so as you are reading through a chapter, you can think through these steps. Observation. Who is speaking? Who is the intended audience? And were there any major events that led to this section being written? Interpretation. What is the author trying to communicate? And why is he trying to communicate it? And lastly, application. How does this passage apply to your life? And what are some action steps that you can take to implement God's word into your life? So that is quiet time. Next, we're going to move into prayer, which is can, normally is a part of your quiet time. Uh, but prayer is communicating with God. It's two-way communication. It is not just you talking to God. It involves listening for God's answer intentionally. And I, I will just tell you right now, God does not always answer verbally, nor does he always answer the way that we want him to when we want him to. And prayer looks different between each person, too. There are so many different types of prayer. We've seen a few types of prayer already tonight. There's structured guided prayer, such as the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, which will be on the screen. We have corporate group prayer right before TMT each Thursday at 645. And it's a great place to come and to pray for each other and to pray for the world. You can pray with an accountability partner of the same gender, and you can also pray by yourself. You can pray before meals. Prayer does not have to be a big formal event. It can be relatively casual. Remember that God wants to be in a relationship with you. 
And if we go back and think about the people closest to us in our lives, are we always formal with them? Most likely no. And there are times where we do need to be more formal with the people we care about most. But oftentimes we are a little bit more casual with the people we're closest to. And so sometimes I like to sit and pray and just go, hey God, this is what I'm struggling with today. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to do anything formal necessarily, but you know my heart, God. And I just pray that, um, that you would just take this, that you would be with me as I walk, walk through this. So Matthew 6, verses 7 through 8 says, When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need before you ask him. Prayer is not about the words that you say. It is about your heart behind the words you say. And if you've never talked with God before, or if you like having more of a guide for prayer, um, the ACTS method is a wonderful place to start. So ACTS is an acronym. Um, A is for adoration, and that's words of affirmation towards God. Tell God why he's great. Confession, which is acknowledging any wrongdoing, which we as Christians call sin, um, in your life that would be displeasing to God. Thanksgiving is T. So that is thanking God for his grace and forgiveness in our lives and thanking him for what he's done for us. Ultimately, the reason why we as Christians want to be in a relationship with God is because God took on the burden for us, for all of the sins that we have committed and ever will commit. He sent his son Jesus as a baby down to earth, which we know is the Christmas story, to live the only perfect life on earth. And he was tried and convicted of a crime he never committed. And he was crucified on a cross, dying the most brutal death on behalf of all the things that we have done to be the ultimate sacrifice for us. But after three days, he defeated death and resurrected, which essentially restored the broken relationship we had with God. We should be thanking God each and every day that we are allowed to have this relationship with him. And we should be honored that we are able to worship God in the ways that we can. Lastly, S is for supplication. And this is asking God for things that we need. And this does not mean he will give you all the things that you ask for when you ask for them. Once again, God is not a genie in a bottle that you can just take out and store away whenever you want. But he still wants to know the desires of your heart. So... I'll be honest with you, when the staff decided to do investigating Christianity as a large group topic, I thought I had the easiest topic. I was looking at the other topics, is the Bible reliable, who is God, how do you share the gospel? Man, living Christian day life, I do that every day, that should be super easy, right? But as I started praying and really thinking about what this topic truly was and how to teach on it, I realized it wasn't as simple as I expected. See, living out a Christian life is not just a checklist. I can't just look at a list and say, well, I've prayed for this amount of time. Check. I read my Bible today for five minutes. Check. I've done X, check, Y, and Z. I'm a Christian today. I can't do that. None of us can do that. I said at the very beginning that living as a Christian means having a personal relationship with God. And no relationship can be simplified into a checklist. Once everything on a checklist is marked off, your task is complete. There's nothing more to add. It's over. That's not what God intended relationships to be. And it's definitely not what he intended your relationship with him to be. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Paul tells us to rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And in Romans 12, 12, he says to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Guys, we can never truly check prayer off of a checklist. We are told to pray constantly. If we do, we wouldn't be following God's direction in our lives and ultimately would not be in a genuine relationship with him. So that's prayer. So now that we've covered two ultimate necessities for living out a Christian daily life, how can we tell when a Christian is really living, it, living their lives out for God? They're bearing good fruit. So, according to gotquestions.org, the fruit is often used as a person's outward actions that result from the condition of their heart. But what is good fruit specifically, and how do we recognize good fruit? Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are good fruits that come from our genuine love of Jesus. The outpouring of this deep relationship between us and Christ should result in these fruits. It is possible to bear bad fruit, 
Jesus warns of this in Matthew 7, verses 15 through 20. Be on your guard against false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown to the fire. So you'll recognize them by their fruit. Another word of caution, bearing fruit is not quantifiable. A certain amount of kindness or patience or love doesn't make one person a Christian and one person not a Christian. You can't make that distinction. Either you have it or you don't. And this kindness, this joy, this peace, this patience doesn't come from the world either. It comes out of the outpouring of the love of God. So while people can be kind and, you know, be gentle and not be followers of Jesus, as Christians, we should see the fruit of the Spirit coming out of our lives more often and more naturally because we follow Jesus. The primary evidence of our faith should be the fruit of the Spirit showcased in our lives. So to wrap up, I'm going to go back to the plant. So the plant took care of first semester, didn't grow fruit. And I honestly do not remember what type of plant it was. This was like my junior year of college, so it's like four or five years ago. I really don't remember. But after the semester was over, I got to see my plant not just survive in my dorm room, but thrive in a new environment. My mom took care of my plant while I was back at school for the spring semester, and she was able to provide all the elements that I was unable to provide. So when I came home um, the week before Beach Reach in March, I had watched my plant not only grow taller, but actually grow out. I got to see it grow bright green and got to, grow so, I got to see it grow so many new leaves. So if you can commit to regular quiet times with God, getting in the word, and authentic prayer in the appropriate context of your life, just like my plant, you can not only just survive in the dorm room, running on fumes, trying your best, just getting by, but you can truly thrive in living in relationship with Christ. Once again, if you have any questions, please come talk to me afterwards. I would love to share more about what that looks like. Um, but I'm going to end by um, doing another group discussion, so get into your same groups, and discuss the questions. Are you surviving or are you thriving? So take a few minutes, and then we'll move on to announcements.